So uh, I'm Stephen Gray. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. So I'm at the uh, ATP1A3 uh, symposium to really learn more about the disease and think about ways that we could uh, maybe intervene therapeutically using a gene therapy approach. So in terms of how I'm trying to work uh, to develop a treatment for ATP1A3, uh, it's really coming at it from a perspective of gene therapy. Uh, we, we have existing approaches of ways to deliver a therapeutic gene across the nervous system. It's, it's an approach that we've been using uh, to treat other diseases and, and actually moving into human trials. So we're interested in taking an approach right now um, just to, to take the first stabs at testing a gene therapy approach to try to treat AHC. So we've worked on uh, a number of other diseases using gene therapy approaches. Uh, the, the first is a disease called giant axonal neuropathy. That's uh, something that actually moved into clinical trials in 2015. Uh, we've treated 11 um, children with that disease. And, and so it's, the approach that we took to treat that disease would be almost identical to the approach we would try to do to treat AHC, just we're delivering a different gene. Uh, we've also applied that to a number of other pediatric neurodegenerative diseases where we've gotten very good results in the lab, and we're currently moving um, about a half a dozen of those into clinical trials in 2019. In 2015, we initiated a gene therapy clinical trial uh, for a disease called giant axonal neuropathy. This was an effort uh, that was in collaboration with the National Institutes of Health uh, and also a purely parent-driven foundation called Hannah's Hope Fund. Uh, it, was, it was really an amazing effort um, bringing together patients, stakeholders, government, um, and it, it, it was the first clinical trial of its kind uh, to try to broadly treat a neurological disease. Um, we've treated 11 patients in that clinical trial for giant axonal neuropathy. Uh, it's been tolerated remarkably well, um, and, and overall, it, it, it's still... <laughs> to be honest, um, we're still trying to be very, very careful in terms of, you know, what, what we're discussing in terms of the treatment effects. Overall, I think that we can say that it's had the, uh, overall I can say that the treatment has had positive effects in the children with giant axonal neuropathy, and the full extent of that um, treatment is still, still something that's being evaluated. What are the symptoms? So in giant axonal neuropathy, the symptoms start off with uh, just some weakness or clumsiness around maybe three or four years old, maybe a little bit earlier. It progresses to a loss of ambulation by around 10 years old, and it's usually fatal around 20 years old. Um, those children are you know, intellectually uh, mostly unaffected. It's, uh, you know, I think a lot of the parents will call it a uh, ALS in kids. You know, clearly when we're talking about a devastating pediatric disease, um, devastating pediatric neurological disease like AHC or like giant axonal neuropathy, you know, we're talking about children's lives. We're talking about the impact that it has on all of their families um, and, and their whole communities. So for us, uh, any approach that we can take uh, and, and I think gene therapy is a very rational approach to try to take. Um, if we can make that disease better, if we can make the burden of the disease less, then, then that's something that we should do. And we all hope to work towards eventually a cure, but in the short term, I think that we'd, be all, we'd all be happy if we can at least treat the disease and make it better. So in order to make things move quickly, um, you know, it, it, when we're talking about gene therapy, uh, we're talking about something that is becoming an established sort of platform treatment approach. It can apply to some diseases. It doesn't apply to other diseases. And so each disease has its own unique challenges. Um, you know, when we look at AHC and ATP1A3, uh, you know, it, it has some unique challenges. It's, it's kind of, um, there are aspects of the disease that are different from the, the things that we've treated before. So it's an experiment, but um, we know that we can deliver the gene uh, across the nervous system. 
um, what we don't know is exactly what that will look like in terms of a meaningful benefit to the patients. Um, what I'm looking for right now is really to engage with the scientific community, establish collaborations. Uh, this is not something that we can do in isolation. Um, so it's it, it's trying to learn, you know, what are, what are the research tools that we can use? How can we um, make sure that we set up our experiments properly the first time, do, do them right? Um, because that's going to be the key that if we do everything right from the very beginning, we can move this quickly if it works. Um, and I think that the, the benefit of where we are right now and, and how a gene therapy treatment has moved forward for other diseases is that if we're successful in some of the animal models in making this disease better, we have a pathway to move it into humans and do it in a much shorter time frame than you would typically look at for drug development. I, I believe that a gene therapy for ATP1A3 can help the disease. Um, we just have to really in the lab boil this down and, and figure out how much it will help because the next steps, um, if it is successful, are can be can be quite expensive. There's a lot of time, a lot of effort that has to go into it. And so this, this comes of trying to decide, is all of that worth whatever benefit we might see? Um, so if it's a very, very small benefit, there, there's, like, there's very likely to be some benefit. But if it's a very, very small benefit, it may, not, it may justify doing more work in the lab before investing all the time and money and resources to move it into a clinical trial. I, th I think that this is a very exciting project. There's, there's, um, we're at the early stages. There's a lot that can go right. There's a lot that can go wrong. Um, we could spend five more years tr doing basic research trying to figure out if this is the right approach or what we're doing is we're just going to do with the work and see if it works. And if it does work, then again, it's something that I think we could move into humans relatively quickly. My time at this meeting has been really fantastic. I'm learning a lot. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of the parents. I'm hearing their stories, and that's what keeps us motivated. You know, the, the need can't be greater for this disease. And I hope that we can bring the skills and the technology that we've built for other diseases, I hope that we can bring that to help AHC.